What can ruin a perfectly good pair of boots? Bad socks. I mean, really, honestly, you wouldn't put crappy floor mats inside of your brand new truck. That's like the worst metaphor I could have thought of. Regardless, socks are some of the most overlooked items of clothing that we wear daily, but some of the most important when it comes to regulating your temperature, dealing with moisture, and your overall comfort. Now on this channel, we have discussed the merits of wool over cotton at length, and chances are you've probably bought yourself a pair of Darn Tough Vermont, Fox River, or Smart Wool socks and experienced this for yourself. But maybe you've wondered, what's the equivalent of like a higher tier boot as compared to these run of the mill socks? What is out there that I'm possibly missing out on? Or, or maybe you haven't thought of it, I, I don't really know. I honestly find socks incredibly boring. Well, either way, that's what we're looking at today. I have chosen four different socks from higher tier brands to just kind of like tell you about the differences between those and the ones that you might buy right off the shelf, you know, locally. Is there any difference? Is the difference worth it to you? Well, it should really come as no surprise that the difference between these socks and most mass produced ones come down to a heritage feel in the way that they're made, more specific yarns, um, hand linking of the toes, more labor intensive process when it comes to producing these things overall. That is kind of the, the thing that happens with the higher tier stuff. You get something that's more based on how it's made rather than the end functionality of it. But just to keep things interesting, I'm actually gonna throw in one control group. One sock, which we'll just call unbranded for right now until the very end. So we can take all these high tier, you know, socks that cost 40 and 50 bucks and we can compare it to something that's much, much cheaper and see if the uh, the value is really there. So the contenders are Rototo with their double face socks in the olive and dark khaki color. Thunders loves Shetland sand socks in their wool. Chups Nordic wool socks. Tenders hand linked alpaca socks. Now all of these different socks may not be comparing apples to apples, but that's not really the point here. What I tried to do is select a model from each company which seemed to represent their brand the best. And of course, I opted for wool whenever possible. One of the things that you'll see in a lot of higher tier socks though is hand linking of any sort of seam. They'll actually go in there and by hand stitch together things like the toe seam or they'll knit them like a tube and then cut them and then they'll stitch together where it kind of uh, transitions at your heel. That's the kind of thing that you're gonna see in this tier of sock, although it's not across the board. All right, let's start off with Rototo, a brand from Koryo, Japan, which creates socks in small runs and offer probably the least exciting pair of the group, if I'm being honest. I bought their double-faced socks, which use a very soft terry on the inside and a tighter weave on the outside, making a really cozy combination. At $22, they're also on the more affordable side and use an 80% cotton, 15% wool, 4% polyester and 1% polyurethane blend. Now, wearing these really isn't that out of the ordinary, other than that really soft interior, which really does feel great, but they don't feature hand linked toes like some of the other models on this list. Although, of course, that does come in an upcharge, but Roto Toe does offer some other models like their Nordic Room socks, which retail for almost 50 bucks. It seems that Roto Toe prioritizes comfort above all else, and I'd say in that goal, they've been a success. When my wife saw a charge to Thunder's love on my credit card statement, she had some questions. These socks are made in Spain and employ small family workshops who've been doing this for generations, often prioritizing yarn and knitting structure to the latest high-tech materials. The model I have here is from their wool collection, and it's called the Shetland in their color Sand. Now, these are 100% Shetland wool and feature a ribbed design. These feel a lot like if your grandma knit you a pair of socks, big yarns with sort of an open weave. There are a couple things to keep in mind about these though. First is that they tend to stretch out after you wear them, but they seem to go right back to their original shape after a wash. A lot of this has to do with their 100% wool construction, which doesn't employ any elastic materials. They really rely on the structure of the weave to keep it from falling down your leg. Although at the end of the day, you'll probably notice that these kind of pile up at the top of your boot. 
Second is that those big yarns can sometimes make it feel like you're standing on a window screen or something. You can definitely feel them beneath your feet. So this wouldn't be my first choice for a long day on my feet. And at $37, they're not cheap either. But if you prize unique socks, which employ very traditional methods, Thunder's Love might be right up your alley. Chup are probably the brand most people are familiar with in this tier. Their bold designs and colors have made them a favorite among the Instagram crowd, and it's really easy to see why. These are made in Japan, and the model that I have here is their Nordic wool, but are actually a blend of wool, nylon, and polyurethane. They're woven on old-style stocking frame machines, which produce only 25 pairs per day. The knitting is what's referred to as jacquard knitting, which results in a lot of cut yarn ends inside of the sock. I really like these socks, not only for their cool patterns, but also because they have a great balance of comfort and old school method. They just feel like nice thick socks, but they are pretty expensive at $38 a pair and can be kind of a hard thing to get here in the States. Luckily, Standard & Strange usually have them along with Huckberry and a few other retailers. Finally, we have my favorite, Tender Hand-Linked Alpaca Socks. Now, these are made in England, and the pair that I have here are alpaca wool. Alpaca wool is some of the warmest around because the individual fibers are actually hollow, trapping more warm air and holding it against your body. Now, Tender knits their socks as one long continuous tube, which is then cut and hand-sewn together, leaving a flat and seamless joint. They also have a terry knit sole similar to the Roto Toe, which make them extremely cozy on your feet. And best of all is that these are a steal at only $22. And in my opinion, these represent the best value of the bunch. But what about our control pair? Well, these are made from 72% merino wool, 27% nylon, and 1% spandex. They feature a smooth toe seam, reinforced heel, and are made right here in the good old US of A for just $3 a pair. Any guesses? Kirkland. The Costco brand Kirkland is selling what might be the best bang for your buck socks that you can buy. These things are great. Of course, they're made with modern technology and the latest equipment, and you definitely won't win any street cred, especially among the style gurus out there. But still, who cares? These just work. For an everyday sock, they are exceptional. So in the end, are these exceptionally expensive and rare and interesting socks worth it? I don't think so. <laughs> I'll be honest with you here, I really don't think so. I'm very happy with my darn tough Vermont Kirkland um, smart wool socks. They work just fine. Sometimes you do get a seam that may end up in the wrong spot on your toe and rub the wrong way, but it's just an adjustment away from being fine. And when it comes to actual work, you know, actually going out and wearing your boots all day and possibly wearing through the end of a sock, I kind of like paying, you know, 10, 15 bucks rather than 30 or 40. Now it is cool how these things are knit. There's no doubt about it. And I love the story behind these things, but I still find socks exceptionally boring. This is probably gonna be the only sock video that you see from me for a long time because I just, I don't get any sort of feeling from them. They're neat, they're, they're very interesting, and these are some very nice socks, but I gotta be honest with you, my money is on the Kirkland and the uh, Darn Tough Vermont socks. They, they've worked for me for so long, I just don't see the need uh, in changing. But, of course, I wanna know what you think. Would you buy these socks? Do you prize that kind of thing? Do you love the way the Chup looks? They, they look great, they feel wonderful, but 38 bucks is a lot of money to pay for a pair of socks. I would rather save that and spend it on something else. But I'm just one person, I wanna know your opinion, of course, so please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, talk to you later.